Hi, hello there. Welcome to Modern Network Security Threats. For this video lecture, we will be talking about Modern Network Security Threats. At the end of this video lecture, you should be able to explain Modern Network Security Threats. Now, this video lecture are divided into several segments. So, topic includes fundamental principles of a secure network. In there, we will be talking about the evolution of network security, drivers for network security, network security organizations, and network security policies and domains. On the next segment, we will be talking about worms, viruses, and Trojan horses. So this includes malware, malicious code, Trojan horses, and viruses. And then next would be attack methodologies. This includes reconnaissance attacks, access attacks, denial of service attacks, and distributed denial of service attacks. And then at the end, we will be talking about mitigating the attacks and thinking like a hacker. All right. So you might be asking, why are we putting security on the network? Okay. So let me ask you some questions, okay, that might be answered or addressed at the end of this video lecture. First question would be, what do they do to protect their network at home? Or what do you do to protect your network at home? What would you do to secure a company's network? For instance, you are a network administrator. Or how would you secure a network communication over the internet? How would you secure a data center? Or maybe, how would you secure the personal devices that employees use to check corporate emails? Let's get started. Earlier on, I asked you about the purpose of security. So basically, the answer is to protect assets, to protect the resources that we have. So historically done through physical security and closed networks. So we have two types of networks, okay? It's either we classified ours as closed network or an open network. Now, when you say a closed network, so we have a tight security, okay? That's why it's, it's called closed. We have a very strong security, but we have a lesser access. If you have a strong security on the network, so definitely your answer, your access would be limited. Okay? Now, the common network security terms includes threat, vulnerability, mitigation, and risk. Now, how about an open network? So, the network today, with the advent of personal computers, LANs, or the local area networks, and the wide open world of the internet, the network today are more open. So when you say more open, so we have more access to the resources. And the challenge to the administrator is basically to balance the access and the security. So but then, in an open network, if you look at these uh, threat actors, they are always there waiting for the time, waiting for the chance to get and penetrate into the network. Now, let's talk about threats. So, what are the types of network security threats? There are typically four types of network security threats, and any particular threat may be a combination of the following. So, you've got unstructured threats, okay? You've got structured threat, external threat, and internal threat. Now, let us discuss each of these threats. So, let's start with unstructured threat. So, unstructured threats often involve unfocused assaults on one or more network systems, often by individuals with limited or developing skills. So, the systems being attacked and infected are probably unknown to the perpetrator. 
So these attacks are often the result of people with limited integrity and too much time on their hands. Okay? So malicious intent might or might not exist, but there is always indifference to the resulting damage caused to others. So that is unstructured. You are not that expert yet. So maybe newbie. Okay? So the next one would be structured threats. How is it different from unstructured? So for structured threats, these are more focused by one or more individuals with higher level skills actively working to compromise the system. So the targeted system could have been detected through some random search process or it might have been selected specifically. So the attackers are typically knowledgeable about the network designs security, access procedures, and hacking tools. And they have the ability to create scripts or applications to further their objectives. So structured attacks are more likely to be motivated by greed, politics, international terrorism, or government-sponsored attacks. So the next one would be internal threats. So what is an internal threat? So this originates from individuals who have or have had authorized access to the network. This could be a disgruntled employee, an opportunistic employee, or an unhappy past employee whose access is still active. So in case of a past network employee, even if their account is gone, they could be using a compromised account or one they set up before leaving for just this purpose. So many surveys and studies shows that internal attacks can be significant in both the number and size of any losses. Okay? Now for instance, in a university settings, so students, okay, employees or personnel who has an access within the resources or within the network internally is considered to be an internal threat. So the last one would be external threats. So external threats are threats from individuals outside the organization with no authorized access to the systems. So in trying to categorize a specific threat, the result could possibly be a combination of two or more threats. So the attack might be structured from an external source, but a serious crime might have one or more compromised employees on the inside actively furthering the endeavors. So these are the four types of network threats. Now let's talk about these network security models. So earlier on, I have presented the types of network. It could be an open network or a closed network. And basically, in an organization, we have what you call security policy. Okay? Now, some of the option, aside from open and closed, you could have restrictive. Okay? But also, I have mentioned earlier that this would be a challenge to the administrator. Okay? So, for instance, you have the enterprise network security and the application security here. So, how are we going to maintain the balance between the enterprise network security and the application security. Now, let's take a look at the model security model. So, for the open security model, it permits everything that is not explicitly denied. So, you've got more access, you've got transparent user access, but the security is, well, lesser, or it has a lesser weight, okay? So more weight on the access and the security, you get the maximum security, but still the access way more. So it is easy to configure and administer, easy for network users, and security costs, well, it is less expensive. Okay. Next would be the restrictive security model. So it is a combination of specific permissions and specific restrictions. So that's what I call the ideal setup in an organization wherein you need to balance access and security. 
Okay? So, more difficult to configure and administer. It is more difficult for the network users and the security cost is more expensive. This is a great challenge to the administrator. Okay? Balancing access and security in an enterprise level. Now, for the closed security model, if you will observe here, the security more way or has more weight than the access. So that which is explicitly permitted, and not explicitly permitted is denied. Okay? So it is most difficult to configure and administer, most difficult network users, and the security cost is also most expensive. Again, Going back to what I have said earlier, it is a challenge for the administrator to balance access and security.